Good afternoon, diesel enthusiasts. So, Lenny Reed from Dynamite Diesel. I'm here to talk to you about uh, 1998 and a half to 2002 Dodge pickup trucks, the VP44. Early in the day, VP44 had a lot of problems with the injection pump failures, just super common, super often. Bosch had a lot of updates to do with the injection pump. The injection pump rebuilders have used all those new Bosch parts and the pumps seem to last pretty good. They're still a bit noisy, they're still a bit low on volume, and they're still a bit low on pressure. Uh, factory opening pressure on the injectors is like 305 bar, so 43, 4400 PSI. We, clear back in the day, discovered that if we dropped that to 290 bar, we uh, decreased the fuel temperature at the injection pump, and the injection pump started to last longer. They also got quieter because the injection pump isn't pounding against an injector that's trying to wait for so much resistance before it opens. There is a danger to that. If you try and open it too early, the nozzles won't live as long as they're supposed to, and you don't get proper atomization. Uh, with extrude hone technology, that gave us the ability to kind of reshape the atomization and enhance the atomization. So we went clear down to 280, 270, 265, discovered problems, worked our way back up to 290. And again, this is all stuff that happened over 10 years ago. We've been using 290 bar now since 2004, 2003 probably. Uh, so the reason I'm telling you this today in 2019 is because there was a half million of those trucks sold. There's still a gauntlet of them on the road today and we still sell over a hundred sets of injectors to those trucks every single month. Um, the reason I want to bring this to you and bring it to your attention is because even though we've been using the same recipes for a very long time and you know they work pretty good, we're constantly getting new tools, constantly getting new technologies, and the common rail stuff, the super metal series injector, that's teaching us so many things mechanically about injectors that we can then come back, revisit, and uh, develop new stuff for the VP44 truck. So recently we've kind of been on a VP44 kick. Um, good friend of mine, Joe Tate, works at this shop. He recently bought a truck from an old friend of mine, Rusty Farstead, and Rusty bought a 2002 back when it was brand new. Uh, the truck's been in our stable per se ever since day one. That truck is still in our stable and we've been using the heck out of it lately for opacity testing. We're using a Wager 8500 series opacity meter and we're revisiting all those recipes. And the reason for that is because I hate smoke. If you guys are out there and you're just smoking people out for no reason, please stop. It's immature, it's childish. It's just a great way to show that you wear your like cowboy boots, like pants on the inside of them. Don't do that either. Especially if they're red cowboy boots, not cool. Uh, well, never mind. Yeah, no, don't do it. So please, the opacity is a big deal. It's causing all of us grief. Nobody loves it, and you never know who you're going to black out. It could be your state congressman. It could be an EPA agent. You don't know. Just don't do it. As a company, we're trying our very best to make sure that even with the worst of tunings, you can't use our injectors to do things like that. Of course, all of the opacity readings I'm going to talk to you about are taken with stock tuning. Um, I am using an edge comp drag box for all of the overall power ends but we'll talk about that stuff as this video goes on. Um, if you're watching this on Instagram, it's gonna be a short little clip. There's a much bigger video about this on Facebook and an even bigger video about this on the old Insta, uh, YouTube. So please, YouTube it, learn as much as you can. If you have any questions, feel free to email us or call us. Um, let's get to it. So first thing is stock flow rate of a nozzle that we start with, this is our this is our Eco Series, and this is 32 liters of air per minute. And what we're looking at is not just the hole size, because I guarantee after doing this for 20 years, I can shove a pin gauge in a smaller hole than you can. But what I'm concerned about is this little guy right here and the distance between those holes. So this radius or this transition is called K-factor. The more we blow that K-factor open, the shorter the shotgun barrel really is. Atomization stays good to a point, but if you go too far with K-Factor, you destroy the nozzle, they get super smoky and you can't control it. Uh, this nozzle right here is good for about 35 to 40 horse over stock, all right? Now this would be what we'd call our stage one, 33, just a little tiny bit of extrude home media run through it, reset the opening pressures. Factory variation in the nozzles is gonna be like one to two liters of air per minute 
uh, deviation, all of ours are going to be like right at 33. So when I say they're at 33, I mean they're at 33. It's not 31, 32, 30, it's 33. Now you can see that the K factor right here is starting to become a little bit more prevalent. The polishing, like there's so much, that light is turned down as little as I can get it. And it's still super shiny like a mirror and it's super, super slick. So when the needle valve comes off that seat, there's a lot of fuel that can escape through that area and there's no, this right here is a picture of our seat. The media that we're using, it can only do damage or work to a hole that's this size. This area that we're looking at all the way across is about a sixteenth of an inch. The media that we use to cut with is measured in a micron, so it can't really do anything up inside this area, so the seat stays perfect and absolute. Sometimes we'll use it to clean if a guy sends in injectors with uh, any sort of debris in the seat area, we'll inspect it with this bore scope and we can sometimes clean the garbage off with just a little bit of media at a low pressure. So again, that's 33. Uh, the opacity on that and the horsepower on that, uh, horsepower is 50, just a little bit over 50. Opacity, I don't have off memory, but I believe it was right around the average of about eight. So again, same nozzle with a little bit more media run through it. This one's at 35 liters of air per minute. You'll see that there's a lot more polishing going on down in here. As the media goes by, it's starting to add some more K-factor. And again, that K-factor is just the radius of fluid going into that nozzle. So 35 liters of air per minute. That one was good for 75 horsepower. And again, opacity was extremely low. Uh, that was right at about 11 on average over a three, three snap test. And this, <clears throat> this is a 100 horse recipe, 37 liters of air per minute. Liters of air per minute were now, uh, factory was 28, 29-ish. This one's 37. Opacity on a factory injector was like three. Opacity on the 100 horse with stock tuning was uh, 11, 12, 13. I actually did that today and uh, I'm pretty impressed with it. We've got video. Most of the states, I know that Washington State in particular, requires you to be less than 30 parts per million to be legal. So we're still well within under that. Um, if you do have another problem, if you go in and you get opacity tested and you're greater than that, look for boost leaks. Look for a plugged up fuel filter. Look for a bad lift pump. Look for an air filter that's got dead mice and uh, a, a big nest of, you know, somebody's like hay bale, like just filled up in the air box. A lack of air or a lack of fuel supply to the injection pump is going to give you a dirty, nasty running injector. If the, if the truck's been parked for 10, 15 years, and at this point it could be, then that truck just could be all gelled up and all of the inside of these injectors could be just, uh, just gooey and nasty and everything inside of them is going to be slow to respond. That'll also increase the opacity. So again, look for low fuel pressure, low fuel volume, a lack of air. Air could be coming from the bad air filter that's plugged up. It could be coming from a boost leak. So as I do all these opacity readings, I promise that that's not a lie. We're doing these things. We're testing these things and it's with like SAE equipment. So I'm doing this to kind of protect you and to make sure that what you guys are buying is actually really good stuff. And uh, to promise you that, you know, driving down the road, you're not going to be using just unwanted unburned fuel. I'm trying to make sure that if you're, these trucks came, they're rated at 235 and 245 horsepower. You throw a set of 35s on there, a lot heavier than the factory tire, that instantly takes the parasitic loss and puts that truck right at about 185 on stock tires, stock wheels, real lightweight stuff, they're gonna be right at 200. The numbers that we're gonna to talk to you about in this video are all taken at the rear wheel, not at the flywheel. So again, all of these numbers I've given you, 40, 50, 75, and 100 horsepower, those are horsepower over stock at the rear wheel. Um, again, stock tuning. And uh, next step, I will show you uh, 
difference between VCO and a SAC type nozzle? 